Don DeLillo knew decades ago that writers were becoming weak and pansies and losing the ability to lead. And today we are going to hear Don DeLillo, one of the greatest American novelists ever, speak at length on the job of the novelist as a leader because many of us like to view ourselves as the introverted novelist in our den doing our own thing. But if you want to be successful as a literary fiction author, you have to, at that current moment, tap into the social climate that is happening. And there are no more Franz Kafkas. There are no Emily Dickinsons with 4 million books being published every single year. There is no opportunity for you to be rediscovered. And so the best thing and the only thing that you can do before time forgets you, is write a big social literary fiction novel that is intense, that is complex, and is whatever you want to do. But if you are going to do that, and if you are successful in that endeavor, then you will be given the opportunity to become a leader. And if we are going to make a literary renaissance happen, if we are going to create an educational and spiritual awakening through books like Underworld, through books like the one you are going to write, then we are going to need to get out of this passive and weak mentality that DeLillo was about to talk about. And my name is Ian, and here on Right Conscious, we talk about everything related to Don DeLillo. If you look at the playlist down below, you will see an ever-blossoming library of videos on DeLillo's books, his life, and his writing philosophy. But enough from me. Let us now hear from DeLillo. The novel is whatever novelists are doing at a given time. If we're, we are not doing the big social novel 15 years from now, it'll probably mean our sensibilities have changed in ways that make such work less compelling to us. We won't stop because the market dried up. The writer leads. He doesn't follow. The dynamic lives, excuse me, the dynamic lives in the writer's mind, not in the size of the audience. And if the social novel lives, but only barely, surviving in the cracks and ruts of the culture, maybe it will be taken more seriously as an endangered spectacle, a reduced context, but a more intense one. And DeLillo is 100% correct here. It is our fault that we have moved away from the grand social literary fiction novels. It is not society's fault. If you look at the revival of Christianity, if you look at the mega churches, if you look at the worship of science and the worship of the New Age movement or whatever, the worship of whatever, people want to believe, people want to be helped. There are people out in the world that want to be transformed. Even the people that you may turn NPCs or the random dude at the grocery store, they are more open-minded to little forms of shadow individuation than they ever have been in the history of the world. I guess that isn't true because in a community and tribal society, you were forced to do initiations and stuff. So I should say the modern world. And so let's now talk about DeLillo's actual statement here because it is very interesting because he provides the term the social novel. And a social novel is something that focuses on a prevailing social problem, whether it is sexism, racism, poverty, illness, government, tyranny, or whatever. And when you look at what modern publishing is shoving down our throats, a lot of it is the social novel. However, let me paraphrase here that I did not vote. I have never voted before. I think that both the left and the right are mostly closed-minded individuals that haven't evolved spiritually or intellectually. But the left has taken over the university system, the publishing system. In general, there are some exceptions. And there has been a loss of trust out in the world from readers like you and I with all these social novels that are being released because I don't need to be ashamed or talked down to. I don't need to be told that I can't write about this or that because it's cultural appropriation or because that's not my voice and I'm taking opportunities away from XYZ, when a writer and an artist hears that, they automatically become resentful. And if they accept that, then they automatically become a weakling. And so we have seen the diversity quotas take over meritocracy in the publishing system and in the MFA programs. We have seen the actual social issues that writers like you and I are seeing on the ground that are actually important, that aren't the manufactured story and party line start to dwindle. And this is a really hard thing because I know countless of you guys out there and you guys have commented before and said, you know, I'm writing about this thing and maybe it's more conservative leaning or maybe it doesn't just align with the party line right now. And I know I'm not going to get published and I'm scared that I'm going to get canceled and all these different things. And all that is most likely true. Maybe not the canceled part, but, you know, not selling well, well or getting published with a book that maybe would have been published 30 years ago. But my job is to be honest with you guys. And I spent eight years in academia. I know plenty of authors who went through the MFA 
system and followed it and have now published novels with major houses that are social novels. And I will tell you guys that those novels that my colleagues and friends have published haven't been barn burners. They haven't been at the level of Don DeLillo or some of the best authors that you and I love. But most of the time, those authors actually have taken themselves seriously. They've put the work in. I, I'm thinking of a guy right now, and he, at every single office in his bathroom, has the amount of hours he's spent on his novel, and he makes tick marks, and there's a ton of pages, and he spends thousands of hours on his novel, uh, his novels, excuse me, and he got a PhD. He went through countless programs. He's been to countless workshops outside of universities and networked and done all the stuff to make writing his life. And then I see... Excuse me. And so when I look at his work, it's good. It's maybe not my favorite work in the world. and It's not comparable to the greats, but maybe he's just getting going. And I could say the same thing about a lot of these other people that most of them actually aren't hacks. They are writing, you know, very good. And a lot of the time I don't feel the soul or I don't feel maybe like they're taking risks. But then when I look at a lot of independent authors out there who actually complain, and I've read hundreds of people's stuff, hundreds of my fans on this channel and independent authors online on Substack or whatever's stories, most of the time their stuff isn't that clean. Most of the time it isn't that manufactured. Most of the time they aren't taking themselves very seriously as authors. They haven't undergone the same amount of training because even though I make fun of MFA programs, you have to show up in front of a group, group of individuals and turn something in. You have to go through classes and learn things and communicate with other people about writing and give live performances. There are all these different things that you have to do that all writers should be doing. But if you don't go get an MFA, you can kind of skate around a lot of that and say, oh, I don't need to do that or I don't, I don't do that. And all these necessary components of being great are missed. And then it really shows, in my opinion, in a lot of amateur writing out there. And I've read countless stories or first chapters that I would say I am very interested in and are really capturing a big social idea that none of these other authors that are being published or that I know would ever be able to tackle. But there is a definite skill gap there. And this is where the concept of being a leader comes forth. This is where you have to look at where you're at right now and realize this is who you are competing against. Like I said, one of my friends that I know, he went to university in New York City, city excuse me, for his undergrad and studied and did workshops with some world famous authors. Then he did his MFA program in the Northeast with who I consider one of the best writing teachers in the world. Then he came and got a PhD at the program I was at with him and studied under National Book Award finalists and other serious writers. And the entire time, he was taking himself seriously. And in my personal opinion, I think he holds himself back from saying certain things because it would be politically wrong, because behind closed doors, he acts differently. But this guy also got into all these programs because he is naturally a talented and driven individual. He is a leader. He is a likable guy. If you asked almost anyone who I went to school with about that guy, they would tell you something nice about him. And so if you have this big social issue, if you have, if you understand that you have a social conscious and that you are going to write something big, then you can complain and act like you can be Ernest Hemingway and just submit something and it's going to become world famous. You can say complain that that's not available anymore, or you can get on the level and you don't have to go to an M MFA program, but you can get on the level and put in the work that your competition is doing. Because I understand it should be 100% based in meritocracy, but the publishing industry has never been like that. That has always been a lie. There's always been nepotism and favors and things like that forever. And so the only way to actually get your novel out there, the only way to have a big social novel out there that has your name on it in the bookstore is to be so good that nobody can deny you, to become so great that it would be dumb for these companies to say yes. At some point with this channel and the growth that I will experience five or 10 years from now, no company in the world would say no to me in one of the books that I'm going to release because yes, the quality is going to be great, but they also know that I'm going to have a large group of raving fans that are going to go buy the novel because I have decided to lead the community toward the ideas that I am talking about. And right now we are in the situation DeLillo was talking about. We are looking, you know, survive these social novels of the past, like an infinite jest are surviving in the cracks of culture. And we're taking them seriously. Here I am doing a hundred hour course on infinite jest. But the thing about novels and about art is that people like you and I can go back and read novels of the past and like learn from them. But the average everyday individual wants something that's closer to their consciousness. I first read Infinite Jest in 2011, and that was much closer to the late 1990s than 2024 is. And so in this 
trust economy, this reading trust economy where trust has been lost by countless readers. The only thing that can bring them back permanently is superstars who they can turn to, writers who are still alive and active, who they can turn to, who are on Substack, who have social media. And you don't need to be posting your selfie and posting what you're reading, but you need to be posting something. You need to be active. You need to actually be a leader. And you have to adopt this mentality for 10 years. This writer who I'm talking about, who finally got his, you know, a novel published with a major house. And for six months after, when I went to my local bookstore, I would see his book. He put in over 10 years of work, more like 15 years of work because he was grinding outside of school during some gap years. And so 15 years of high production and networking and thinking. Maybe that's not worth it for you, but he became so good that he wasn't able to be denied. And so I see people give up so easily. You know, I run a free writing school where I talk about, you know, just slowly building your audience with a long-term mentality, not doing any hacks and stuff like that. That The link to that is down in the description below. And over there, I've already, I mean, I think we've been going a month now. There've already been people who've quit. They, they're like, oh, this is, I'm done. Substack's a waste of time. And I look and they've barely put in any work and they're already giving up. And this is what the modern plight of the writer is. There's always a new idea. There's always a new woman in the red dress or um, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that everyone is always chasing. But no one is actually putting in the, you know, putting in the actual work over the course of 10, to 10 or 15 years, which also requires you in 2024 to become a likable person. Ian in 2010 and 2011 wasn't necessarily a likable person. I had people that liked me, but I had a lot of people who didn't like me and that wasn't their fault. That was my fault. Yes, they were idiots. Yes, I told them that they were idiots, but I was just logic growing it up. And so the leader, the, the writer that we need to become in 2024 is a combination of everyone from the past. We are going to transcend, we need to transcend irony. Like David Foster Wallace preached, we are going to have to be able to have a routine and get very insular and write about these major social topics in a literary way. Like Don DeLillo, we're going to have to start to infuse magic into our works like Murakami said, because mysticism across the board is on the rise. And to be able to do that well, we're going to have to first experience it in our own lives whether that's Christian mysticism or whatever, whatever other form. We are going to have to connect to nature and make setting a character like Cormac McCarthy. And I could go on and on, but if you don't have these things, if you don't tick that box, then I don't really want to read you because in, the tr in this kind of recession, recession trust economy, we are also living in a society that has less time than ever to read novels. And so as a writer, you have to direct us. You have to tell us what we need to do. And people are very uncomfortable with this, but one of the more mind-blowing things about getting on a stage, and this is something that I think writers can learn a lot about, that if you go get on stage and do any type of performance, whether it's music or stand-up comedy or whatever, you learn really fast that you actually have an immense amount of control over an audience. You know, if you've ever been to a concert and like, everyone raise your left hand or put your phone light on, everyone automatically does it. And the dynamic can still be true. As a teacher, you know, I do public speaking every single day as a high school teacher. And if I tell my kids, raise your hands, everyone raises their hands. People listen to you. And if you have an energy and a seriousness about you, then you can lead. But right now we're also suffering from a problem that in the internet marketing space, there are a ton of hacks because you can sit. And if you have a big ego and you push, you can go a pretty long way being a shitty writer on Substack or whatever, wherever, wherever else. And that is also killed trust in reading. And so, like I said, we can give up forever or we can become better than those guys because they are hacks who don't believe in their work and are just looking for attention or a little cash in at the end. And so I believe in you, but take your time. If you aren't here yet, you don't need to become world famous overnight. Get some attention in another way. If you want validation from your parents or someone else, there's other ways to get that than being a writer. And if you want to be a writer, then focus on that over the long term. Think about it. We don't need any more fucking fantasy or sci-fi novels that aren't deep social critiques. I'm just saying, we don't need random fluff novels. And, it, and you can take time, a lot of time, before you release something. Write for free online, have fun, work on the craft, work on yourself. And then when it comes time, and there are moments, if you put in the work that you will have a time to step up as a leader, then you will be ready. I talk about this all the time over on my free writing school, not all the time, but I have before, that on this channel, I used to make videos like this and speak just like this, but I had 40 subscribers. I made 200 videos, but at the start, I was at the start of my 
booktube career i wasn't as likable the videos weren't as good i wasn't talking about things that mattered as much and i was re resentful and angry and why does no one care about me and then i but i was just waiting for the big moment because at some point i kept evolving i kept looking i kept studying other uh youtubers and saying okay what do i need to do and eventually i my the day before my big break as a booktuber i made a great video that i think is is as good as any other video i've ever made and i talked at the level and with the energy as i am right now and then the next day I did that again, and that was the day that everything changed for me. And so that is what your career as a writer should be, that you are continuously getting better and not being resentful and waiting for your big moment. So boom, there we go, everybody. Shout out to Don DeLillo. Shout out to you if you are willing to put in the work. And if you are not willing to put in the work, then honestly, you should just relax, understand that maybe you are writing to fill some psychological void and support other authors, write for fun, heal yourself through journaling and maybe come back a couple years later. Boom, there we have it. I will see you guys all very soon in the next video.